<laughs> so overall, we drilled a thousand meters all up. That's almost a decade worth of work. Now I'm putting on my clean suit. It's not the most fashionable thing. And we top it off. Well, we're ready to go. Everything that you see on a periodic table, everything that's in the atmosphere, everything that's being breathed or evaporated out of the oceans, dust that comes off the continents, we find literally everything in the ice. So this is our core. Waiting on this one. So I'm loading the next Antarctic core um, onto the mountain now. It's not the easiest of jobs, it's a little bit fiddly, but... It melts the ice core layer by layer, back through time, and as the water is produced, it is pumped by these pumps into these various tubes. And this allows us to do analysis on all sorts of things that are contained in these ice cores. Some of the elements that we measure, we measure in parts per quadrillion. And to visualize that or to get a feel for what that actually means is we're looking for a second in 33 million years. We see traces of um, nuclear bomb testing. So we're looking for dust as an indicator of wind strength. We're looking for um, properties of the water that tell us about the temperature, where this air mass may have come from that precipitated the snow. You could almost say we're, we're taking the DNA of the atmosphere. In the ice cores, there's little bubbles, and those bubbles contain a real sample of the atmosphere through time. We can release that air and measure the greenhouse gases. And so by studying how much of these various components is in the ice, we get a feel for what climate was like at the time when the snow fell. If you take all these records together from across the continent, there's some very strong messages that stand out. And these are really that the last 50 to 150 years were vastly different from the last 1,000 or 10,000 years. For example, we look at the hydrogen and oxygen, the stable isotopes of water, which gives us a very good indication of temperature at the continent. And it has increased in the last 50 years or 150 years. So if we choose something like CO2, it has remained at pretty much 280 parts per million over the last 1,000 or 10,000 years. Right now we are at already 386, I think. We look at things like methyl sulfonate. This is produced by bacteria that lives in the sea ice. And therefore we measure their productivity in the ice cores and it tells us sea ice has changed. When I look at the dust concentrations in the ice cores, Dust concentrations have risen considerably, so I'll show you right now. This is West Antarctica here, this is East Antarctica here, and the colours represent the actual dust concentration, with the reds and the greens and the yellows showing high concentrations, and the blues and the greys showing low concentrations. I'm going to show an animation of these dust concentrations. So here, 1700, very low in this area. And then towards about 1850 to 1900, you start to see these reds coming in in West Antarctica. And then up to the present day, you see lots of reds. And this area is showing very high dust concentrations. And these dust concentrations are linked to the strength of the winds, in particular westerly winds, around Antarctica. And what it's showing us is that the winds have been increasing steadily since about 1850, and they've been increasing significantly since 1950. These winds are actually hemispheric scale winds, so we're seeing large changes taking place over the whole southern hemisphere. If we look, for example, at certain chemistry in the ice core, for example, the marine elements from the ocean, we can see that these westerly winds that circumvent the Antarctic have intensified and came closer to Antarctica. 
And if Antarctica is changing, it will have very fundamental consequences for the rest of the planet, like sea level, productivity of the oceans, the heat budget of the globe, storm tracks, wave patterns, things that we don't even know yet how they will be impacted by these changes. We know from the past that climate change isn't gradual. It's happening in big leaps. Suddenly, the system is ready to move to another mode. And if that happens, the change is very fast. So we should be concerned that we're actually somewhere near such a mode change.